Hey folks, welcome. Here we discuss real stories by real people. Today we have the story of a man who delivers Valentine presents to his girlfriend while she was cheating on him. Let's see how it goes. Story 1. So, I've been dating this girl for about 7 or 8 months now. We met at a concert and started dating shortly after that. I thought things were going pretty well and I always brought her stuff from my job as gifts. I work at a local bakery making cakes, cookies, macarons, really every type of sweet bread you could want. It's a really nice place and I love working there. I would advertise it here but this story might be bad press so I'll keep it a secret for now. We're relatively small but we've been getting more and more popular and our sales are picking up. About a year or so ago, we started doing this Valentine's Day promotion where for I think $50 you could get a full suite of chocolates, macarons and sugar cookies. The sweets for your sweet deal. For an extra couple of dollars, we would even deliver it for you and you get a customized card and everything. The week of Valentine's is really busy for us just in general, but when we started doing the promotion things got really hectic. And we even had to hire out drivers. I couldn't see my girlfriend because of how busy it got and I told her I would make it up to her the day after. She told me okay and she was excited for it. This year was pretty bad as far as things go. Bad as in busy, we had constant orders and a ton of people coming in so we basically were busy the whole day. It was a hard day for the drivers too. I don't know if we got featured on a local news site or something, but it felt like a ton of people were ordering deliveries so we had a lot of our people running in and running out constantly. So about halfway through the day, all of our drivers were out and we got another call for another delivery. We had just sent people out and we couldn't be sure when they would come back. The place was close by so I just suggested that I run out really quickly and I can drive there and deliver it myself. My boss says okay, I get the box in my car and I run it out. The name on the card was the same name as my girlfriend's which at first I thought was a funny coincidence and made me think I should get one of those boxes for her. I get to the place and I knock on the door. The person who opens it just so happens to be my girlfriend. The two of us are just staring at each other in stunned disbelief for what feels like hours. Finally, another guy comes to the door and asks what's going on. I repeat the question and demand to know what's going on. Meanwhile, my girlfriend is looking between us, I'm guessing trying to decide what to do and which relationship she's going to save. She eventually looks at me and tries to tell me that it's not what it looks like and begins making excuses. I'm not proud to say that I started getting hostile and yelling right there and then, but I was overworked and unbelievably pissed off. I just couldn't handle how this was going. I don't know if the other guy knew at the time, but I think he slowly started to come around and understand what was happening midway through. He and I started shouting at each other. I don't know what he was pissed about except for maybe ruining his Valentine's Day or something. But we started having it out right there in front of his house. Finally, I just tossed the box at their feet and told them both to F off and die. I came back to work and didn't talk to anyone for the rest of the day. When our workday was over, my boss pulled me aside and told me that they had gotten a complaint from one of their customers over a driver's behavior and asked me what happened. I tried to explain to her that I found my girlfriend cheating on me but she cut me off and told me that I represent the store and I shouldn't be picking fights with customers over drama. The short version of the story is that I hand delivered a box of sweets directly to my cheating girlfriend and now I might lose my job over it. It's been an effing mess. Update. I have an update on this story. I didn't end up losing my job as a matter of fact. My boss took me aside and apologized for being insensitive about my problem. She told me she was overworked and should have been more considerate and I said the same. Final update. Final update I hope on this. I really want to put this to bed. I finally relented and heard my ex out on her side of things since she just wouldn't stop trying to contact me. It got so bad that she actually ended up calling our work phone and asking to speak to me because I wasn't answering her. I didn't want to bring outside people into this, so I decided to speak to her just so she would stop bothering other people. We met up for brunch at this breakfast place. Before she began, she asked me to sit through the whole thing and just consider what she was saying. Her explanation was so mind-boggling that I couldn't even last until the end of it. First, she goes back to saying that it was a misunderstanding even though we had already moved past that point in her messages. 
She tells me that the guy she was with was actually her friend and that they were celebrating Valentine's together, since both of them were dating someone else that was busy that day. And rather than be alone or wait one effing day, they decided they might as well eat chocolates and sweets together. How fun. Complete effing nonsense. I got up and began to leave immediately after hearing this. There was more to it, but I wasn't going to waste my time with it. She begged me to stay, but I just told her to F off and leave me alone. Well, she didn't. She started showing up to my job and waiting around in the bakery to try to speak to me there. Completely crazy. I still didn't engage with her, so she just waited there the whole day. Eventually, my boss took the hints I was giving her and eventually asked her to leave. She showed up the next day and my boss told her that if she didn't leave, she would call the cops and get her taken away. I haven't seen her since then and she hasn't tried to contact me. Hopefully, this psycho nightmare is finally over. It's good you've finally gotten rid of your ex, OP. She seems obsessive and one would think it's because she loves you so much and she doesn't want to lose you. But if she truly loved you very much, then she wouldn't have cheated on you, no matter how busy or caught up you were with work. I'm sorry about how you found out, but I'm glad you found out. I'm also glad you're not getting fired over this. You seem to love your job. I wish you good luck in your next relationship. I hope your ex leaves you alone and stays far away from your workplace. Take care, OP. Story 2 Traditional. I'm a cardiologist. I have my own practice and I work long hours. We are well off, so she doesn't work. She's a stay-at-home wife, a very good one. Our house is always clean, there's always a meal for me when I get home, and she wakes up as early as I do and makes me breakfast. We constantly have sex. Usually after I get home from work, she jumps on me and kisses me as a welcome. She's always really happy when I get home from work. She sometimes can't even wait until I'm done eating for us to have sex. One day, I came home from work and I was expecting the usual. Her running to me, kissing me, etc, etc. But when I walked in the door, she didn't come running, so I walked into the kitchen and found her there. Food was ready as usual. She was washing something in the sink, so I went behind her, hugged her, and started kissing her neck. She turned away. I grabbed her and faced her towards me. She had a tear running down her cheek. I asked her what was wrong, but all she said was, Do you love me? I said, Of course I do, honey. What's wrong? She looked away again and mumbled something I asked her to repeat herself. She said, I'm pregnant. We've been married for almost a year now and we've been wanting a baby, so I was thrilled and full of excitement, but I didn't understand why she was in tears. I said, OMG, that's great, baby, but why are you so sad about it? She said, I'm not. I'm happy, but... But what? John. She was quiet for a few seconds. John, I cheated on you. I was speechless and completely shocked because I did not expect that. She went on. Susan texted me two weeks ago. Susan's my secretary. She's come on to me a few times, but I've always rejected her. My wife continued talking. She told me you guys were having an affair. She said it's been going on for about a month now. I was completely furious, so I went and got a few drinks. I called Fred and told him about it, so he joined me immediately to support me. Fred is her guy best friend who she claims was nothing but a friend to her. They were always really close, so it bothered me, but she made it clear that she saw him like a brother. She kept talking. I had more to drink until eventually I was so drunk I didn't know what I was doing. We went back to his place and he was being so affectionate and nice, so I slept with him because I wanted to forget all about what you had done to me. After a few hours, I came home and you were still at work. I had already sobered up, so I decided to act as if nothing happened, as if I didn't know about your affair. Two weeks went by, and every day during those weeks, I went to Fred's while you were at work. I wasn't guilty at all for having sex with him, because in my mind, you had been doing the same thing to me for a month. I decided to check up on you, so I asked everyone you knew about the affair, but they all told the same thing. That you weren't having one. That Susan was clearly trying to break us up. So as soon as I found out none of it was true, I called it off with Fred. Yesterday was my last day with Fred. I couldn't live with myself if I didn't tell you about it, so here I am telling you, hoping you'll forgive me because it was all so stupid and I really regret it. I should have come to you first. I should have asked you about it, but I was scared you would just lie to me. I was still taking it all in, so I hadn't said a word. She put her hand on my face and forced me to look at her and then told me, Baby, I love you, more than you can imagine, and I'm so sorry. 
I looked away because I knew if I didn't, I'd forgive her right there and then because I still loved her very much even though she had hurt me. She removed her hand from my cheek then set it on my chest. I hope you can forgive me, John. I don't want to lose you. I can't live without you. Just give me one chance to prove that this will never happen again. I grabbed the hand that was on my chest and looked her in the eyes and told her to leave the house. She said, where am I supposed to go, John? In anger, I told her to go to her lover's house. She turned away and started walking upstairs to our room. I thought she wasn't going to leave, so I followed her up there yelling, if you don't leave, I will. But when I got there, she already had a suitcase out. Just give me a few minutes to pack and I'll be out of here, she said. She was wearing a beautiful silk robe, which she dropped. Underneath, she was wearing my favorite bra and underwear, which she knows I love. She looked gorgeous. I was so hurt, but I loved her and didn't want her to leave. She got dressed, grabbed the suitcase, and started heading out the door. Without thinking, I grabbed her suitcase and pulled her back with it. Wait, don't go. If you leave, we'll never fix this, and I still have a lot of questions to ask. She said okay and set the suitcase down. What do you want to know, she asked. Do you love him? Absolutely not. I only love you. Is the baby his? No, it's yours, John. I promise. How do you know? I was pregnant before I slept with Fred. The day I got drunk, I was trying to miscarry. I didn't want the baby without you. I wasn't going to tell you about it because I was angry about the affair, so I planned to leave you and I figured it would be easier if you didn't know. Is the baby okay? Yes, I went to the doctor. It's fine. She slept in our bedroom, but I went to the guest bedroom that night. This was yesterday. I don't know what to do. Please help me decide whether I should leave her or forgive her. Update. It's been about a month now. There's not a day that goes by that she doesn't apologize or beg for forgiveness. We still live together, but I sleep in the guest bedroom. I love her, and this is driving me crazy. I want to reconcile, but every time I think of forgiving her and moving on, I picture her in bed with another man. A man I knew. It's so hard. I want my wife back. My wife, not Fred's mistress. OP, I think you have enough stress on your mind, being a physician and all. Cheating, having sex with a guy because she thought you were having an affair, shows a lack of maturity on her part. Why didn't she ever talk to you about any of this till she got pregnant? That's unforgivable. Read the update and it seems like both of you are a bit immature for trying to get even on each other. You're both grown human beings and it's time both of you started acting like one. In my own opinion, I think divorcing her and ending support and seeing what you can do about avoiding alimony. It will be better in the long run as you don't look back. Secretary's fault or not, in the end, it's your wife who initiated the cheating herself by sleeping with her best friend. Now it's your duty to make the logical decision before things get even worse. 